Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use an Amish style Swift and a yarn winder. And I'm in front of the camera today so that I can show you a little easier how to use the Swift because it's kind of a big thing, um, just size wise. It's a little harder to shoot. Uh, so basically, when you want the reason you would want to use a Swift is to turn a hank, which is the yarn that's like this. It's not the typical skein you'll find in a big box craft store. It's kind of wound together like that. Like this uh, one you see here, this is Lion Brand Crepe Twist from their LB collection. It's a great yarn and a lot of the higher end yarns come like this, but working directly from the hank is just kind of a, rep it's a recipe for disaster. You're gonna get a lot of tangles. So what you want to do is wind it either into a ball by hand or use a yarn winder to create a center pull cake like this one. So let me show you how it's done. There are lots of different kinds of Swifts on the market. Um, overall though I'd say there's two main kinds. There's the Umbrella Swift uh, which has a lot of moving parts and then there's the Amish style which I have here. This one is from Stanwood Needlecraft and I like this one because it is very simple to use. It comes in these parts that you see here and to set it up we take the two base pieces and they fit together like so. And this is called a tabletop swift because it sits right on the table rather than clamping to a ledge like the ball winder does. Then it comes with these four pegs and you take the shorter one, stick it right down here in the base that holds it together. Then you take these two longer pieces and you want them with the holes facing up. You'll see they nest together like so. And we put those right on top of the peg. And that's almost done already. We just have these four pegs left. So we're gonna use these to put in the holes on here. And that's what will hold the hank after we untwist it. Now, you, the reason there's lots of holes is because hanks come in different sizes. So you can adjust the size of the pegs. And the swift is already together. So now I'm going to stop with the swift for a minute and show you how to take the hank apart to get it ready for the swift. Okay, so to begin, we're going to take off the label. And I always like to keep those in a safe place so I can reference all the information I need later. And then what you're going to do is look for the end, typically that has one part of the hank coming through another. We can just pull that right through. Okay. And then I'm going to be very gentle with this and let it kind of start untwisting the way it wants to be here. Now, the tricky part is to separate the two sides into, it'll create one big circle. So we need to make sure we've got the right parts here. If you look at one end right here, you can see there's a nice defined hole right there. And that's a really good place to start. We can just start pulling the skein, up, the hank, I should say, apart at that point. You'll notice too, as I do this, that there are little strings tied around in different sections. You can see that one really wants this particular piece to be on this side, so we'll go ahead and pull that over. And we'll just continue to gently pull the hank apart until we've got a nice circle. And at this point, we're going to look for the end. Now, on some hanks, there will be just two ends loose while they're usually facing each other inside here or along the outside. This particular brand, the last one of these that I wound had the ends tied together. And here we are. Oh, nope, that's another one of the strings going around it. All right, we'll keep looking. All right, ah, and here we are. This one was hiding from me. Okay, we've got the two ends. You can see that it's attached to the skein here. So I can go ahead and cut this knot out. And I wanna cut right at the knot so I don't lose any yardage. There we are. And now I need to take a look at where these two ends go in the skein. This one is laying nicely here. If I follow this strand, it seems to separate easily from the rest of the skein. This one also does, but it goes to the outside of the circle, whereas this one stays on the inside. 
So I know that this is the end that I want to start winding with because it's on the outside of the circle of the hank. So now I know that this is the end I'll start winding with and this will be the last end. So I'm ready to go ahead and put it on the swift. So I'm going to move this to the side here and pull the swift in. So now I will gently put the hank over the pegs. Now you can see I've got a lot of room here, so I'm going to move the pegs out, I think, to the fourth hole on each one. And this is really just a process of experimentation, but you want to try and keep it even in the same hole on each one to keep the tension even. And four is pretty good, but there's still a lot of, a lot of play there, so I'd like to keep it a little tighter, I think. So I'll move out to the fifth hole on each bar. Like I said, you can see this is really pretty low tech, but that's what I love about it. Easy as can be. And then when I'm done, I know that I can take it apart and put it in a bag for easy storage. So I've got my end here that I'm going to wind from. I want to make sure that it's on the outside of the skein here, or the hank. Kind of spread out the rest of them here. Okay, and now is when I'm ready to cut off all these little strings that have been used to hold the hank together. Okay, let's see here. There's one. I'll unwind it there and take that on off. And I'll continue on around the hank, removing all the securing strings. Okay, and here is the last securing string. So I'll go ahead and take this one off. Like so. Oh, don't you know, that's the one that doesn't want to come off. There we go. Okay, so you can see if you look back here, there's a little bit of twist. So what I want to do is look at this strings on the inside, or that end I should say, this end is on the outside. So I'm going to untwist it a little bit right on the swift here. I just wanna make sure it's going to come off the swift as easily as possible. Now the opposite end, the inside end, I am going to wind up a little bit and put around this last post to kind of secure it so it doesn't end up getting wound around other parts of the swift as I work. Okay, and now we need to look at this from another angle while I hook it up to the ball winder. Okay, so what I'm going to do is take the starting end from the skein and I'm going to put it on the ball winder. To begin, I put it through the holes here in the arm that comes out and then I put it through, if I turn the crank here, you can see there's a second arm with a hole. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it through that one. And then I am going to put it in the notches at the top of the winder here, the plastic part. And then there's a, this is a hand crank ball winder. There's also electric ones, but I like fewer moving parts, less things to break and easier to use for me. So I'm gonna pull back here on the yarn to get a little bit of tension and start winding my skein. Now, eventually I've taken up all the slack. Let me move this a little closer so it's a little easier to see. And it is going to start pulling the yarn from the swift, just like so. Oh, got a little caught there. All right, there we go. Now it's going nicely. And as you can see, by turning the crank on the ball winder, it pulls it right on off the swift. I don't have to do anything else. And it, I can start moving pretty quickly. Um, I wouldn't wanna go too crazy because if it does get caught on something, you don't wanna cause a tangle. That's the, the whole purpose of this to avo is avoid tangling your yarn. But you can see it's going pretty quickly. Now this is also a Stanwood Needlecraft yarn winder. Um, I chose it because it got great reviews and so far I love it. I have used it with lots of yarns, um, even those that aren't hanked. There we go. 
just when I have a half skein left, um, it's great because then I don't end up with that tangled mess at the end of a half skein. I can put it on here and make it look and stay really nice. Now this one's getting tangled a little bit at this corner, so I'm going to go ahead and just spread that corner out a little bit on the post. Makes it a little easier for the yarn to come on af off the swift. As long as the swift is nicely balanced, you've got the pegs in the same hole on each arm, it should stay nice and even. All right, let's really get it going here. And as you can see, this is really easy to use. I've only had this swift now for a couple of days and I'm already going to town, winding up my hanks of yarn, getting ready for my next project. And this is a lot easier than talking a partner or kids into holding your yarn for you, I'll tell you that much. So we are coming to the end here. And as I get towards the end, I like to slow things down a little bit. This is something you just have to do by hand. There's no brakes on it. And got the last few rounds here on what my daughter calls the yarn merry-go-round. And there we are. We're at our other end. I'll go ahead and take that off the swift and just let that wind on up. And the yarn is now ready to use. I take that last end and I like to just kind of tuck it under some of the strands on the outside of the cake here. There we are. And then pull the inside end out of the grooves at the top and carefully lift the whole thing off the ball winder. And I now have a center pull cake ready to use. And of course the Swift comes back apart into its pieces so I can put it in a bag until I'm ready to use it again. So I hope you've enjoyed my demonstration. Uh, if you have, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and thank you for reading Moogly.